Here are the solutions for the core uh, part of the Conex mock exam. First problem, graph the circle x minus a plus y plus 2 equals 4. Uh, first thing you should do is you should recall, uh, and I would put this on your um, note sheet if you don't have it already, that the, um, that the uh, standard form for a circle is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. So if you match this up here, you would see that the h uh, matches with the um, 8, the uh, k matches with the 2. Ooh, but look at that. There's a plus 2 there. We'll get back to that. And the r matches, the r squared matches up with the 4. Okay, so let's try to figure out what each thing is. Well, h is equal to 8. That's pretty obvious. k is equal to, hmm, would k be equal to 2? Actually, there's a minus here. Where does that minus match up? There's no minus here. So that means we could rewrite this as y minus negative 2. That's the same thing as y plus 2. And now we can match up the k to the negative 2. So we know that k is actually negative 2, right? Finally, uh, r squared is equal to 4. So that means that r is equal to 2. Remember that r in the, the circle um, standard form is the radius. So uh, the radius in this case is 2. Now, uh, h and k refer to the center of the circle or circle uh, equations. So we're looking for the center of circle at uh, x equals 8, k equals negative 2, which would be this point here. Then we want to make a uh, circle of radius 2. So this is a radius of 2 here, right? Because um, uh, the radius is measured from the center of the circle to the edge of the circle. Okay, so do you see how we've drawn a circle located at 8 comma negative 2, which is h and k, and we've made it a radius of 2. Okay? All right, so that's number one. Uh, next step, write the equation of this circle in standard form. Okay, first thing you're going to do is going to, you're going to write standard form uh, here so that, um, oops, we can uh, fill in the blanks, okay? Okay. So remember, h and k are the center of the circle. And in this case, here's the center of the circle. Now, what are the coordinates of the center of this circle? Well, the x-coordinate is minus 2, and the y-coordinate is 0. So in this case, h is going to be negative 2, and the y-coordinate is going to be 0. So it's going to be x minus negative 2 squared plus y minus 0 squared equals r squared. And r squared in this case is the radius squared. The radius here, let's see if we can figure out the radius. The radius is either this line or this line or this line or this line. That's the easiest way to measure it out. Let's do here. So we're going to measure from uh, here to here. So that looks like it's six units, right? Six units. So the radius is going to be 6, or not the radius, uh, the radius squared is going to be 6 squared, right? 6 squared. So now we're just going to simplify it. We're going to put x plus 2 squared uh, plus y squared equals 36. Okay, so this is the answer here. Uh, so let's write this in simplest form, okay? on the test. All right. Um, the graph shows an ellipse. Write its equation in standard form. Okay. Now remember, the uh, standard form for an ellipse, write this down on your note sheet, is uh, x minus h squared divided by a squared plus y minus k squared divided by b squared equals um, 1. Okay, the right side is always 1. Um, let's see, where is the center of this ellipse? The center looks like it's at 0, 6. Okay, so if 
the center is at 0 comma 6 that means h equals 0 and k equals 6 okay and uh, what about the radius of an ellipse well an ellipse is kind of weird because it doesn't really have what you normally think of as a radius like a circle it has actually two radiuses. It's got a radius, a horizontal radius, and it's got a radius that's like a vertical radius. And since it's an ellipse, the horizontal radius is not the same as the um, as the vertical radius. It turns out that uh, the horizontal radius is equivalent to a, which is which is right here, right? And the, the vertical radius is equivalent to b, which is right there. Now, the values here are squared, so be careful, because the values here are not squared. The values here are squared, so they're going to look different, okay? So let's see. The values for a and b are a equals, it looks like 4 in this case. All I did was I counted the blocks here, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then the values for b are 2, right? Um, and I already know the values for h and k, so now I'm just going to fill in the blanks. I'm going to put x minus 0 squared divided by 4 squared plus y minus 6 squared divided by b squared, which is 2 squared, and of course the right side is 1. Now I'm just going to simplify x squared divided by 16 plus uh, y minus 6 squared, and I can just leave it like that, divided by 4. Okay? So this is the uh, equa standard form equation of uh, this ellipse. Okay. Uh, next one. We're going to graph the ellipse with this equation. And now I'm going to compare this equation with the standard form of the ellipse. Uh, notice that um, the the sign of the operand here is uh, positive, right? So you're adding two terms together when you make an ellipse. Notice that uh, the ellipse standard form equation looks very much like the hyperbola standard form equation, except for in the middle, instead of ad uh, adding them together, you're subtracting them in the case of the uh, hyperbola. Okay, um, now we're going to uh, graph the ellipse. Okay, and so what do we know about the ellipse? Well, we know that 25 is equal to a squared, and we know that 9 is equal to b squared, and we did that by matching up the fact that 9 is underneath the y and the uh, 25 is underneath the x, so we can figure out that a squared is 25 and b squared is 9. What else can we figure out? We can figure out the h and the k, right? So uh, plus 2 is related to minus h and uh, plus 3 is related to minus k. Oops, I'm not going to use that same color again. It's very confusing if I do that. Okay, so now let's uh, write out all the equalities. So we have minus h equals to 2, and maybe this way of doing it is a little bit easier than the last way I did it. Uh, h equals negative 2, right? I multiply both sides by negative 1, and I get h equals negative 2. So I know that h is equal to negative 2. Then I know that uh, positive 3 is equal to negative k. So k is equal to negative 3, right? I multiply both sides by negative 1, okay? Uh, so I have now h and k, which turns out to be the coordinates of my center of the ellipse. So the coordinates of the center are negative 2 comma negative 3. And now I'm going to figure out what is uh, a and b, which are the um, horizontal and vertical radii of the ellipse. So a squared, remember, is 25. b squared is 9. So that means that a value is 5. 5 and the b value is 3. So I'm going to draw the ellipse at a center of negative 2 comma negative 3, which is right there, and then I'm going to extend uh, the horizontal uh, radius, uh, 5 in each direction, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, okay? And then I'm going to extend the uh, vertical uh, radius of b in uh, up and down uh, a distance of 3. 
And then finally, I'm going to actually draw the ellipse connecting these points in kind of a flat circle shape. Okay, and I'm done. All right. What are the foci of the ellipse? Uh, x plus 3 uh, quantity squared divided by 64 plus y squared divided by 9 equals 1. Okay, so in this case, what you want uh, to look at from your um, note sheet is, once again, the standard form of the um, ellipse, just so you can see what it should look like, and then compare it. And the other thing you want to see is the equation which relates the focal length to A and B for an ellipse. And that equation is A squared plus B squared equals, I'm sorry, it's A squared equals B squared plus C squared. And this is not, uh, you know, totally obvious and easy to memorize. So that is the whole reason why I'm giving you the note sheet, because there's a lot of little formulas here that you need to remember, and it's not really worth remembering. Okay? So, uh, Remember, A and B are the A and B from here. What is C? C is the focal length, which is the distance of the focus, or each focus, from the center. Okay? And in this case, where is the center? Well, let's see. I'm going to identify uh, using um, these uh, terms. Uh, that, like, I can see that they match up. I can see that h is equal to negative 3, right? It's not positive 3 because it's plus 3 here, and so it's a negative, minus negative 3, right? h equals negative 3. k is equal to 0 because there is no k term here, right? The a value is, uh, the a squared value is 64, so that means the a value is the square root of 64. Do that on the calculator, it gives you 8. The uh, b squared value is 9, so the b value turns out to be Okay, so uh, here's our center, negative 3, uh, 0. And then here are the horizontal and the vertical radius of the ellipse. Okay, and why did we figure out the horizontal and vertical um, radius? Because we need to know if this ellipse is a, a wide ellipse or a tall ellipse. Okay, and in this case, it is a wide ellipse. And since it's a wide ellipse, meaning it's a, uh, you know, it's half width here is 8 and the half width here is 3, so it's it's wider than it is tall, then we know that the the focal points are along the x direction and not the other direction, okay? Cuz if it was a tall ellipse, then the focal points would be like that. It would be like on top of each other. Okay, so since this is a wide ellipse, we know that the focal points are along uh, the x direction. So what we can do is we could say, okay, the center is negative 3, 0. And so the, the focal points are uh, translated from the center by uh, plus um, the focal length. Oh, I didn't find out the focal length. Let's figure out the focal length first. So a squared is 64, b squared is 9, and then c squared is unknown. So 64 minus 9 is c squared, and 64 minus 9 is um, 55. Okay, and then so this would be uh, square root of 55. c is equal to the square root of 55. And so basically what I would be doing is I would be adding square root of 55 and subtracting square root of 55 from part of the coordinate of the center. Which part of the coordinate? Well, remember, we're going uh, to the left and to the right. So that means we're going to add it to the x coordinate. Okay. So on one side, we're going to have negative 3 plus square root of 55, and then the y-coordinate does not change, it's still 0. And on that, the other side, it's going to be negative 3 minus negative square root of 55, comma, 0. It also doesn't change, okay? So the two focal points are this one and this one. 
Okay? And if you want to figure it out, you could uh, you could figure out what square root of 55 is. Um, let's see. So the square root of 55 is 7.42. Okay. So um, the square root of 55 uh, plus negative 3 is 4.41. And the square root of 55 uh, plus 3, or no, I'm sorry, the square root of 55, uh, sorry, uh, negative 3 minus the square root of 55 is negative 10.4. So um, let me bring back the, okay, so here, I am going to rewrite uh, this one here. Negative 3 minus square root of 55 is negative 10.4 comma 0. And then negative 3 plus square root of 55 is 4.42 comma 0. Okay, so that's just another way that maybe you could uh, write the answer. Okay, on... Um, IXL, they like for you to write it um, as a root or as a square root uh, because it's an exact answer, but um, it's okay if you um, write it as a decimal as long as they don't tell you to write it in rational terms, okay? Um, what is the focus and directrix of the parabola below? Um, so remember that uh, on your note sheet, you should have the formula p equals 1 over 4a, and of course a is equal to 1 over 4p, okay? And uh, let's figure out, from looking at this, what are the focus and directrix of this parabola, okay? So we can see here that the a value of uh, the parabola is obviously 9 because it's multiplied times x squared, right? Um, this value we'll deal with in a second, okay? Um, so, if you put uh, 9 here, then you're going to get that p is equal to 1 over 4, nine, 4 times 9, which is equal to 1 over 36. Okay. Uh, now let's figure out um, where we um, are finding the vertex or the center of the parabola. So remember that uh, the standard form of a parabola, which you might want to write on your um, sheet, is uh, a times x minus h quantity squared plus k. And remember, in this case, the h and the k are the values of the vertex, okay? So if you compare that to this, we can see that the negative 3 corresponds to plus k, and negative h, or my, uh, h doesn't correspond to anything because there's no minus h term there. So we know the h is 0, and we know the k is negative 3. So that means that we know that the, vert we know that the vertex of the, the parabola is 0, comma, negative 3. Okay. Um, then let's look at, uh, let's sketch what we, we're going to have here. So we're going to have, here's my, um, uh, my x and y axis. And normally I have a parabola like that, right? And this is 9x squared, which is a positive a value, so that means it turned up like that. But in this case, it's shifted down by 3 because the center is at 0, negative 3. So it's going to look like that. So it's, it's facing up, uh, it's opening up, but the, the vertex is uh, below the x-axis because it's at 0, comma, negative 3. Okay, now let's figure out where the... Um, where the vertex and, or the uh, directrix and the focus are. So I'm going to draw those in pink. And the directrix is, of course, a horizontal line that goes below the uh, parabola. And the focus is a point which goes slightly above the parabola. And the distance between each of these uh, characteristics and the... Um, and the vertex is p. So the distance between these two is p. The distance between these two is p. And remember, p in this case is 1 over 36. And so the, uh, the 
um, coordinates of the vertex are uh, negative 3 comma 0. Oh, uh, no, it's 0 comma negative 3, right? 0 comma negative 3. So the x-coordinate is 0 and the y-coordinate is negative 3. In this case, to find the values of the um, directrix and the um, focus, what we need to do is uh, add and subtract p from negative 3. Okay? So uh, the equation for the uh, directrix would be y equals negative 3 minus 1 over 36, right? The directrix is slightly below the vertex, right? So it's going to be minus 1 over 36. So actually that turns out to be minus 109 divided by 36. You can multiply 36 times 3. That gives you 108. You add it to 1. That gives you 109 over 36. But let's say that you already forgot how to do that and you happen to be allowed to use the calculator. So what you do in that case is you do this command here. So what you do is you do negative 3 minus 1 divided by 36 and then if you do it just normally it'll give you a decimal but let's say that the IXL wants you to give a fraction so then you go to math fraction and let's say you don't have this calculator well you better buy this calculator because you need it in about five months anyway or less uh, so the answer is negative 109 divided by 36, right? And then what about the focus? The focus is slightly above 0, negative 3, and in reality it's p above. What's p? 1 divided by 36. So if I want to figure out what the coordinate is for the focus, I would say, well, I need to figure out what is 1 divided by 36 above negative 3. And oops, and I need to figure out what that is in fraction form. So I go math fraction. And the answer is negative 107 over 36. Okay, so the coordinates of the focus are going to be 0, comma, negative 107 over 36. So that's the focus, and this is the directrix equation. Okay, and so that was the answer for this section. Now we're going to go to the last one, which is what are the foci of the hyperbola uh, here? And uh, we need uh, two things from your note sheet. One is we need the standard form of the hyperbola, which is x minus h squared divided by a squared minus y minus k squared divided by b squared. And that is all equal to 1. That is uh, the standard form of the hyperbola. What are h and k? Well, as usual, h and k are the center of the conic. What are A and B? A has to do with the width of the conic, B has to do with the height of the conic, and I'm going to show you what that means in a second. Uh, the other thing that we need to know is that to find the focal length, or the distance of the focal point from the center of the hyperbola, we're going to use a different equation than the ellipse. The equation is going to be A squared plus B squared equals C squared, okay? And C is going to be the focal length once again, and A and B are going to be the A and B here, which are the A and B here, okay? So basically, A squared is equal to 81, we can see by pattern matching there. B squared is equal to 140, 144, and we can also see that in this particular case, uh, H and K are um, 0, right because there's no nothing being subtracted from x and y which means that um, the hyperbola is centered at the origin okay so let's let's sketch the hyperbola just so we can see what it looks like the the i think the trick to drawing a hyperbola is to draw the virtual rectangle that's at the center of the hyperbola in this case um, we can uh, draw the, high, the center uh, virtual rectangle by looking at the values of A and B. Did you know that uh, the value of A corresponds to half of the width of the rectangle and the value B corresponds to half the height of the rectangle? So in this case, the A value looks like it's going to be 9 because the square root of 81 is 9, right? And the B value is going to be 12 because the square root of 144 is 12. So it looks like the rectangle would be slightly taller than it is wide because the half height of the rectangle is 12 and the half width of the rectangle is 9, so it's slightly taller than it is wide. Okay? Now, 
what does that mean in terms of where is the hyperbola located? Do we know if the hyperbola is a left-right hyperbola or if we, it's a top-bottom hyperbola? Actually, we don't yet. The way we figure that out is we look at the standard form of the hyperbola. Remember in the standard form that we just drew here, the standard form has x squared term minus the y squared term. Now, this is like the the common way to write the hyperbola, but uh, basically this corresponds to only half the hyperbolas. The hyperbolas that have a left and right side to it are written in this form. If you have a top-bottom hyperbola, the way you write it is y minus k squared divided by b squared minus x minus h squared divided by a squared equals positive 1. Okay? So um, if you remember in the investigation, I'm mean, not the investigation, but the summative project from the last unit, remember how if you put a negative 1 here, then the whole thing becomes top-bottom instead of left-right? Well, the reason why that is, is if you put the right side to be negative 1, then the left side, you know, continuing as is, looks kind of like this, right? But let's say that I wanted to get rid of this negative 1 and make it positive 1. So what I'm going to do is going to multiply both sides by negative 1. The right side becomes negative 1 times negative 1, which is positive 1. The left side becomes negative x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared. But since we don't like to have negative signs at the beginning of our expressions, what we decide to do is we're going to reverse these two, and then we're going to write it like that. And you see how the x is second and the y is first now? So basically these things are the same. You don't need to, to you know, understand exactly the difference between the two. You could just memorize that uh, x squared minus y squared equals 1, is the um, left-right hyperbola, and y squared minus x squared equals 1 is the top-bottom parabola. That, that's fine. Okay, so once you have the rectangle in the middle, and we're not graphing a hyperbola today, we are only finding the foci. Oh, that was a terrible picture because the center is actually supposed to be at the origin. But uh, making a sketch of the hyperbola can help you figure out where the five foci are. Because now that we know that it is a uh, left-right hyperbola, we know it's a left-right hyperbola because uh, it's x squared minus y squared and not the opposite. So we know that it kind of looks like this, right? Actually, it touches the rectangle here. The, the rectangle determines where the verti vertices are, so we know that they touch there. Okay, so if we know that it's a left-right hyperbola, we also know that the, the foci are also left-right foci. So they're going to be here and here slightly on the outside of each hyperbola. Now, what is the distance between the center and, and each foci, each uh, focus? Well, we find that using this formula. And what's a squared plus b squared? a squared plus b squared is 81 plus 144. 81 plus 144 turns out to be 225. So our c squared value is 225, and that makes our c value very nice because um, square root of 225 is a whole number. It's 15. So, we know that the distance from the center to the left foci is 15. We know the center from the, the center to the right foci is also 15. So that means the foci are uh, negative 15 comma 0 and uh, 15 comma 0. Okay, so these are the two foci for this particular hyperbola. Now, what if you had a center that was not 0, 0? You would do exactly like we did in the previous case with the ellipse. If you had a center that was, say, like 3, 2, then you would modify the x-coordinate by negative 15 and the x-coordinate again with positive 15 to generate the two uh, foci that are not centered at 0, 0. Okay? So pretty easy, right?